Hello, everybody. Welcome to our show once again. This is Grizzly from coast to coast and around the world. This evening, we have Trisha with us. How are you doing, Trisha? I'm really good. Happy good. to be here. Glad to be I'm talking to so you again. so ecstatic to have you back on the show. Thanks. Really am. So, where do you want to talk about? I mean, you got so much going on with everything and so much that you can do and so much that you are doing right now. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it really is. Always. Thanks. Um, well, I would love to share um, this experience that I had. Um, well, actually. Okay. So about a month ago, I was looking back through some pictures and videos from when from 2020 i was scrolling back because my my dog of 17 years she um in december she she flew off to be with the angels so i was looking back i wanted to kind of go back and look at some pictures of her and videos and and i was in um so i want to tell uh, two experiences that were pretty unusual when i was living in Montana for the six months that I was in 2020. I want to, I want to talk a, a two specific, really, really neat experiences that I had that I didn't realize was happening. I didn't know that, that this being was present at this particular moment and I captured it on video and I did not realize it at the time. So I want to, I want to definitely talk about that. Oh yes. That is just still amazing to me with, the way that my journey with the Sasquatch people have been go has been going, the, the 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 way that they've been communicating with me and initiating contact and letting me know that they're there over the years, it's been like a non-linear experience, um, which I'll explain about that. And then um, and then I'll tell another experience that is totally different um, realm, um, but of an interest of mine. And then I want, I would love for us to talk about, well, I'm going to, I think it would be great for us to connect um, the experiences that I'm going to be talking about are really positive ones, really good, really helpful. And I want us to have a discussion, like kind of like two parts, you know, part two will be discussing how, you know, we both would like for other people to get you know and us enjoying the positive side of the paranormal so right that's the, the 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 powerfully positive paranormal experiences so those are the things i'd like to talk about that sounds awesome to me yeah really does you don't want to have that music playing in the background the whole time <laughs> oh it is it is okay i don't hear it anymore no it's recycling itself Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So thank you, by the way, for having me on that, the other show where we, where there was the panel, us discussing, um, the, the conversation that we had, um, that, that kind of the, the, the turn of the, the, the way it kind of, um, transitioned from one thing to another with the, the, the incident in Idaho, um, I really am happy that I got to share some personal stuff so that I can help others with learning how to keep yourself safe out in the world. Right, right. Yeah, so thank you for, for that, for letting oh, me absolutely. express myself in that way. You know, that it was like empowering a little bit. So, so thank you. Oh, anytime, anytime. Yeah. 
So, um, where do you want me to start? Wherever you would love to begin the journey. Okay. All right. So I like sharing. I think it's interesting hearing what people's experience of 2020 was, you know, cause there's so many different experiences that people had in their lives that year. And so for me, I, the six, there's a, there's a six month period during 2020 where I was staying in Eureka, Montana, small town near the border of Canada. And I had, let's see, four very significant paranormal experiences. And three of them were Sasquatch related. And then one is, I'm going to call it like a shamanic experience. And so the first experience, and then also too, I, I tried to get a, a PowerPoint <laughs> presentation so that I could do this like a mini PowerPoint presentation, but the, the pictures, it, it was, it said it wouldn't support, you know, the, the file couldn't go into. Oh no, we just had to resize them. So I, I decided at that moment, I am, I'm not going to, I want this, it's not going to be a stressful experience. It'll just happen when it happens. And then we can figure it out. So yeah, yeah, that's okay. So what I what I'm gonna do is when when we're done and you and you send me the link, I'll post it to my Facebook group. Okay, that'd be and awesome. It's a public group. It's called Paranormal Spiritual and Mystical Experiences, and I've been posting my experiences that are very unusual, and then my Bigfoot stuff, and so please everyone come, come join in. I mean, it's, I want to hear your experiences. These ones are of the, the higher realm quality. So if they're, if it's anything to do with the lower dimensional energies stuff, um, I, I, I definitely monitor, you know, when somebody wants to post something, I definitely read it or, or listen. And if it's not fitting in, it has to fit in with, what, what this group is about. So if you want to share some amazing things, like for example, I, I posted um, recently, I have had where I have been hiking around in the woods and I come upon these two separate structures that I've seen in two different locations now with like probably less than three miles apart. And the, and there's one of, one of the structures is very long, like tree, like long, tall, skinny pines, let's say, that are laying flat, that are like three to five of them or so, like leaning um, sideways, like horizontally along the ground. And then along that are these limbs stacked, leaning next to each other, on, on that does that can you visualize that what i'm talking about yes i can so you can go on that that facebook group and i posted the, these experiences these videos there so i i noticed the second one um when i was hiking like a couple weeks ago like it, something said look up the hill and i did and i could see that i could see these branches um laying down on the ground with these other like lined up ones next to each other so I was like, I'm going to go check that out. So I filmed it. And then while I'm up there, I'm panning around and I'm, cause I'm seeing like some little arches pulled down with the log placed over the top and leaning branches here and there. And I turn and I can see, it looks like a square um, blind, but with only three walls with lots, almost like Lincoln logs lined up, like a tiny little structure, a, a, a tiny square structure of logs that have like, and then over the top of it, and this is in this, these two different locations, it's very, these very similar two structures. There's also sort of a little bit of a teepiness of trees, of limbs going over the top of this 
square structure. And I, both times I'm like, you can hear me in shock, like, whoa, what, wow. Oh my God, what am I seeing? You know, type thing. So anyways, I just, I wanted to share about that because that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, so I'm looking forward to see if I find any more of those around. Um, but okay, so back to Montana. All right, so um, long story short, I was trying to get to Canada to go do expeditions with a guy and his initials are TS. Okay. He's in the community and I was going to go live at his house, pay rent. And then he was going to pay me to do, to lead some expeditions out there. And in my mind, it was really happening. So I wasn't able to go because of the border being closed. And um, so I was hoping to get my money back from him because I was really needing then to find out what plan B was going to be since I couldn't get there. And he would only give me back part partial of my money. So I just wanted to say that. Um, so this, it turns out that I got to borrow a camper trailer and have it placed at an RV park in the most amazing location, like a minute drive to the Canadian border. The scenery is just mind blowing. The, the area is an area called the trench where glaciers moved across this plain. And there's these divots in the land from where the where the, the glacier runoff and then formed these different lakes out there, like almost like giant golf divots in the, in the, in the earth. And down inside one of these divots are tons of pine trees. And then somebody created an RV park. It's, it's amazing. So I got to be out there. I was the only one there for a couple months. And so I was in heaven. It's amazed how it all came together for me, how, you know, safe, so now I'm safe and in an amazing location uh, with my dog and my parrot. And so I decided I wanted to make a fire pit. And so I went around and found rocks and created an amazing fire pit. And I'm like, I'm going to do fire ceremonies. And, and at that, you know, before then, and at that time, and since then, I'm, I'm, I'm very into um, learning how to connect with the um to learn about the the elders and the i like to call them the ancient people of the land the people who were living hundreds of years ago thousands of years ago connect with them and have amazing wonderful fun uh friendships and experiences and reciprocity and at that and so that was what was in my mind knowing that that whole area called Tobacco Valley where they lived and they used the, 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 I think it's called Kootenai, the Kootenai river, uh, to travel and they grew tobacco along the river and just so, and then inside that divot where the RV park was, there was the, the local, the, the current tribe, um, had asked the owners of this RV park, if they could do their wind ceremony down inside this bowl. And so that's, it's a very sacred site. And I was just very amazed and, 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 and thankful that, that it was lining up like that for me. You know, I felt like I was definitely getting some, some help from the non-physical for this all. And I know, I know I did, cause I'll, I'll tell you a story. Um, okay. So, I, I make my fire pit. I'm, I'm really happy with it. And so that night I made my own little fire and it's really dark out there. So I have my dog sitting on her bed a little bit away from the fire pit. And so I'm filming. So, okay. So I'm scrolling through my, my phone just like a month ago. And I see that I have this short video that it's in the dark and i'm like what's this one so i 
did not watch it after I filmed until just a month ago. And I could not believe what I caught on the film or what I caught on camera. So I'm, I'm scrolling. I'm proud of my fire in the fire pit. And you can see me kind of scrolling around, you know, so you can see the fire in the fire pit. And then I pan to the right and you can see my dog in the dark, you know, a silhouette of her. And then I pan back now to the fire in the fire pit. And around 30 seconds, I clearly see two eyes standing about three feet or so from the fire. <laughs> so oh. I could not believe it when I saw this. So I shine, eyes facing forward. And so I was, so I was feeling in those moments. I, okay. I didn't know that they were there. I know that I was super enjoying myself. I was in heaven. I'm like, this is amazing. I am getting to have such an amazing experience out here. I feel so thankful that that this one local guy is letting me borrow his camp, this camper trailer that's just been sitting there not being used. And then he called the owners of the RV park who were still in California and asked if he could park it there. And they said, yes, they let me stay there for free for four months. Wow. Yeah, it was really, really nice. I mean, because there was, there was obviously a whole nother reality of, of the world, you know, going on right then. And so I'm really thankful that there were people in that town that were there, they were doing what they could to, to help me. <laughs> so thank you people of Eureka, Montana. Um, so I was in a really good space. I was in a really good energy. I was feeling really good. I was feeling really happy. And in my experiences that I've been having with the Sasquatch people, they've been very gentle and they have been initiating interaction with me, letting me know that they're there in different ways. And so I will, I, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to post with, with this video, I'm going to, I'm going to link it to my Facebook group. And then in the description, I'm going to add pictures so that people can see what it looked like during the day. Now, Rick asks, what color was the eye shot? So like, just like white, like pure, just, just light white, white, solid white, if you know, glowing, glowing white. That's, that's, yeah. I mean, you can go on my, I will post the video again with the link so you can see it. It's also on my YouTube channel. I, um, I've been posting, um, different experiences like this, um, on my YouTube channel and it's called exploring the paranormal with Trisha Brown, T R I C I A B R O W N. And so I it's on, it's on there too. It's just 30 seconds or 36 seconds. And I've watched it over and over again in, in amazement. And so I want people to be able to see the perspective because if it's, I mean, obviously I know that I can tell that, that this being is like three feet from the fire pit and less than six feet from me. And so I feel very, I don't know, honored, um, happy, um, glad that, that this being chose to be there with us. I mean, I had gotten there, like, let's say, I think like June, no, July. I don't know. I'm going to say, let's say I, I, I got there in that campsite RV park spot, uh, July 2nd. I think it was somewhere around there. So I think the day that I, made this fire pit, I think was July 7th. So I, somewhere in there. Okay. I was kind of new to being there. And I really, the, the four months that I was there, I explored big time all over that land and in the trees and had such a magical experience there when, while I was there. So 
not knowing that this being like right away was, was there with us and wanted to join in. I, I'm, I'm, and so clearly this being was okay with me filming him, her. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, it wasn't like I pan around and then like it, it's just stood there. It just stayed there. It's amazing to me. I, okay, say something. I mean, what what do you think? It's not. It's not it's, it's unbelievable. I know that. I mean, I couldn't fathom sitting there. You not seeing anything. I mean, you're all excited and you know you got your fire going and you're happy right. and exactly. filming and 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 lo and behold, you get home and or go back the next day and watch it. And you're like. No, I did not watch it until like a month ago. This happened well, a month, you know, and then you're like, no, what? This happened in July of 2020. That's crazy. So I feel I wasn't meant. I feel like this timing was exactly when I was supposed to see it. Because here I am enjoying my fire. I don't have to then stop filming and then watch my video, <laughs> you know, so I didn't, I did not watch it then. And I just kept on with my life. I mean, I had a lot to think about at that time. My dog, um, she needed to have her tail amputated because she had a, 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 um, a growth growing on her tail. And so I was focusing on that. And I was just in like such relief that I had somewhere to live. And, and then I, so then I was using that as a home base while I drove five hours to go take her to Pullman, Washington, or first I had to go back to, um, Whitefish, Montana for her vet appointment to remove her tail. And then <laughs> that was going like an hour, the opposite direction. And then I was driving five hours from Montana to through Idaho into Pullman, Washington for her radiation treatments. And thank you everybody who donated to the cause for Lucy. It, it, it helped her live three more years. Wow. So I'm very, very thankful. I, I did a, like a fundraiser. I'd never done that before. And I was like, please, if some you know, people can, can help um, Lucy with her, um, her, her appointments and, and people did. And thank you very much. And let me tell you, Judy Spira, Spira, Tony Spera's wife and Ed and Lorraine Warren's daughter, Judy. Love you, Judy, so much. She really, she really donated to Lucy's cause. And so she has a fundraiser thing that she does where she makes, she calls them Lorraine bracelets. And she's taken a lot of um, Lorraine's like costume jewelry and, and then she's sold them to help to people who want to help support. And then she will write checks to organizations. And she, she helped me twice. She helped me with one of the radiation appointments and then with um, like Lucy surgery appointment and all that. So, you know, right. th they're amazing people out there. You know, I, I met them when I was, when I went to um, visit the, the Warren's occult museum in 2017, I think. And she watched my parrot Manny while I was down, you know, I got, they, they allowed me to go into their house into the Warren's house. And I did not know who they were at that time at all. I just know that she was an amazing, wonderful person to sit there and watch my bird while I was down inside the museum. And I didn't know till later. So we, you know, so she, they are very special people. I, I just wanted to, to mention that little sidetrack, but so I was, I was also exploring a ton while I was, while I was there. I really was taking the, the opportunity to enjoy that area of the world while I was, so I would take pictures and videos and just um, that kind of thing. So I, I definitely wanted to share that experience and, and um, people can go and look at that video. Um, I have on my group page different videos 
Um, and also on my, my Facebook page, Trisha Brown Free Spirit, where I post my other experiences that I, that I have had during that time. I had some rock throwing. Um, I heard what I call the man yell. And I was camping at a lake totally by myself in July and, or was it June, June or July? I think it was maybe, it was July. And I heard, it's called, I call it the manual where it sounds like, ah, and so I will also put a picture and a video of that location of that. And then I heard like a return call, same manual sound that's very uniquely different than these other vocals that you hear of them. So, and then I've heard that same vocal in Georgia. Wow. Twice. So four times now this manual sound. And then on my YouTube channel, I, I also post about, I was at the tobacco river on my birthday, August 4th, 2020. And three rocks were thrown into the water out in front of me. And then I felt like that they were around me. I, that whole, ex, that whole experience, there was some different components going on. It was like, I think there was some shape shifting happening with some animals that I saw. I saw like a beaver or an otter on the other side of the river. And then I looked down and I looked back over and I, it wasn't there anymore. And then I, I could hear a deer snorting, like, let's say, I don't know, 20 yards behind me and just standing there, just staring at me intently. And I was like, hi, I'm Trisha. And I have my parrot with me and my dog. This is Manny. That's Lucy. And I kind of mimicked it snorting a little bit. And then I just decided to kind of go back to watching or to sit back down. And I was reading a book called the interdimensional Sasquatch, uh, the, the psychic spot. No, it's called psychic Sasquatch, their interdimensional connection or, you know, something like that. You can, and I was in the middle of reading this book, like right at these moments of when these experiences were happening. So I heard like a little kaplunk in the water after these two animal sightings. And I look up thinking I'm going to be seeing a little head floating, you know, swimming around in the water. Like, oh, maybe I'll see like the otter swimming in the water or maybe it's the beaver swimming around. N nothing there. Just the current in this like S turn that I'm sitting in. It's like, you know, in the summer. So the, the water had was was a lot skinnier and, and shallower. The river. And so I was like, OK, whatever. So I went back down to reading the book and then right out in front of me in the, in the water, a cuss splash. And I don't know, you know, when you have experiences where you, you have a reflex, boing, I stood up so fast and like, whoa, 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 what just did that? And I'm like trying to bulge my eyes out of my head to try to see who just did that, what just did that. I'm panning all around. There's no one out there and no human could have thrown this. The rock was at least, I would say, bigger than a softball size. And so it was a moment where I remembered to, to speak <laughs> to the space in the moment of having an experience. So I was like, at first I was like, um, are, am I, are we bothering you? Do you, do you not want us here? Do you want us to go, you know, type thing. And then, and then, cause I was starting to feel like a presence. And then I said, can I watch you do that again? Can I see you do it? So I was like, maybe they'll materialize, you know, on the other side of the river, or maybe I'll get to watch one like drop out of midair into the water or whatever. I was totally open <laughs> for watching that happen again. So then I like, so I say that and then I like quickly, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go because I'm not sure what to make of this 
presence feeling that I'm feeling. Right. And so I I lean my head down to start picking up my stuff. And then right the moment that my head went down, cuss splash. There goes like the third rock. The same place as the second rock. The same sized splash. And I look up to see the, the, the spray and the displacement of the water. And I was like, whoa, okay. You know, and so I videoed there. Like, I don't know. I went back there, I don't know, a couple days later during the day to video. And then something told me to delete the video. So I did. And I went back in my videos and I do have a video of when I was there later in the year when there's snow on the ground. So I'm, I tried to find pretty much the same spot that I was in when that experience happened. And so I will also put that with, with this. And so I'm, I'm panning all around. And so you can see, um, that I came from this trail that's up a bank, like far away. And there's no way a human, (laughs) there's no way a human could throw this rock aiming. It was like a lob the way it landed just straight down. So either they could have thrown it from maybe up on a ridge or from who knows could they could have been right next to me <laughs> and thrown it like <laughs> playing with me you know um so or they could have been on the other side of the river right there too i don't know rick just, rick was, says my elders were uh insistent that the beings are tricksters and rick also Mm -hmm. says that he also likes to warn us as well that who likes to warn us no warns rick likes the warn he likes the what you know the history you went to the history museum oh the warrens oh okay yes yes the warrens yes warrens okay i thought you were saying like the the w-a-r-n-s like nah it must be my accent sorry (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they're they're amazing, wonderful people. Very feel very thankful to have intersected with them for sure. Um, so yeah, so in the beginnings of my having that experience, you know, in, in different experiences that I've had, I sometimes wonder, was that a Sasquatch? Was it a juvenile Sasquatch? Or could it have been like a a, a Kootenai um ancient person? I mean Sometimes I wonder, you know, what, you know, which experiences that I'm having. Um, I mean, I know that, that we, in all in all our listening to each other's experiences, there's lots of rocks being thrown connected to the Sasquatch people. So I just like to say that because I'm open to, you know, thoughts. It definitely was, you know, all my experiences have been gentle, um, helping, um, fun, you know, I, I think that they were just, just playing with me a little bit, you know, I don't think there was anything in there that was trying to make me, you know, feel scared or whatever. I know I've, I've been on some other shows and, you know, this, you know, I've, I've thought maybe, you know, some people think this rock means that, and the bigger rocks mean that, and maybe they were trying to get me to move away because maybe there was a bear in the area or whatever. I mean, there's different ways to interpret it. I mean, I can only say from my experience what what it felt like while I was there. You know, so um, so that was. Or you are a lot stronger and have no fear. <laughs> I think yeah, I about that because a lot of people were like, "Yep, I'm gone. See ya." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I don't like I tr- I, I try in my life to not have fear. Like I don't, it's not my natural state. I mean, I, I've been going into the woods and the forest, doing things, hike, um, outdoor things, uh, sports for, since I was very little and, um, confident, you know, confident and secure feeling and safe and paying attention and common sense and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was in an area where, that trail when you the to 
entering that trail, there is a, a billboard thing that mentions what to do if you come upon a bear. So, but I asked all, a lot of the locals whenever I'd see one, have you seen any bears out here? No, 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 no. But still, I'm going to just be aware. But, um, but yeah, I felt, I felt safe except for there was a feeling that, that came a, a, this feeling of, you know, Steve Isdall's mentioned this same sort of trying to describe it kind of like a pressure. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Not heavy. I don't mean that, but just, I just think I was feeling presences. I think that there was a presence around me or presence is, and yeah, they're powerful, big, you know, big beings. So they're going to maybe put off a, a stronger vibe whatever. I don't, I don't know. That's, and then, so yeah, I gathered up everything and, and left. So I talk about that also on my, on my YouTube, on, on my YouTube channel. So, all right. So the other experience I want to mention, which is more to the side of connecting to the shamanistic side of things. Um, now what? Now explain to everybody listening because we always get everything interpreted wrong. What is a yeah. shaman? Okay, well, if I was going to be okay, so this is how I'm going to answer. If I was going to literally be talking to someone, I would not call them a shaman to to them. They do not shamans don't like being called shamans, but it's a way to describe a medicine person or an elder, um, a person who helps. Um, with the more indigenous ways of like medicinal um, ways of helping people physically, mentally, emotionally through the indigenous ways, different ways, depending on where they are uh, on the planet. And I haven't yet been outside of the United States, but I have gotten to travel around the United States to now multiple States. And so, yeah, so that's, does that answer the question? I, I, I could. Yeah, start. I think it does. And Rick uh, has got one more question before you leap into the next. Okay. He wants to know why you were present when the rocks were being thrown. Did wow. you smell anything? I did not smell anything. That's a good question. No, I was just completely just, it was a nice day out. It was probably about, I don't know, one or two. And you know, what's interesting is when I, when I was first telling this, when I was right after I had the experience in my mind, I felt like I had been there longer, but then later on, when I look back at the experience, I don't think I was there for very long. So that's kind of interesting that this, this, this timing thing that I'm not, not sure, but I got there, I put my stuff down and it seems like pretty quick is when I saw the, the, whatever it was on the other side of the river or the, and the, then the rock. So it was just a nice day out. Um, August 4th, summertime. Um, I was like, you know, I want to go for a hike and I want to go to this spot on the river. I had hiked past the spot many times and there's something about out that spot on the river that made me want to go down there and hang out. So that's, that's what I can say about that. Any vertical um, or anything? What, yeah, that's, that's what, I, what? Okay. He was wanting to know any vertical. What'd you say? Vertigo. No, I didn't have any, there was no issues. I, I didn't have any. Yeah, no, it was just, I felt fine. I felt good. Um, and just, I felt like this, we should, I'm going to go. Cause I'm not sure, you know, I think too, it just could have been my own, like, I don't know how to take this and I want to be safe. So I'm going to go now, <laughs> you know, that's, that's it. But I mean, I've had my animals with me many times during paranormal experiences and they, they, they're, they're, they're both of them are, are happy, peaceful animals. So they've been included in, in, in this. So was, did I answer the yeah. question? Yeah, like what, sure did. What made them throw the rocks? Is that what he said? What? No, uh -uh. he was just asking about, uh, you know, a few things. And Rick said also uh, about medicine man and how they are gifted. And he agrees with you. And he's just, yeah, I'm, how absolutely. They're gifted? Yeah. How we're gifted. What do you mean? The medicine man. 
the shamans. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. So I've been, I've been studying, I'm going to say studying shamanism. Um, and what I mean by that is listening to these people who have, have spent years of their, of their lives um, being initiated, initiated into the, the, the learnings of doing medicine on people in a more holistic way and a combination of talking to them and maybe an herb or plant or, you know, energy work. So I've done a lot of listening to different audio books of different elders or, or medicine people teach, teaching their teachings and their stories. It's super fascinating. And then also from um, a man that um, he said the same thing. He doesn't call himself a shaman, but, you know, kind of like a shaman, if, if that makes sense. So I've asked him lots of questions about all this. And he said to me, he taught me that when you're out in the, in the woods, a way to help um, let the space know and whoever might be there, the non-physical presences or the trees, you know, nature, to let them know that you're being respectful and that you're a good person is to leave a hair as an offering and so, or tobacco. So um, I have done the tobacco thing and that to me, you can, I've done that next to a tree or somewhere or a hair. And I'll say, thank you so much for letting me be here. I really appreciate it. It's amazing. I'll, 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 I'll look around and I'll, I'll feel that, that feeling of good vibes of, of me just so happy to and thankful that I'm literally getting to be there in that moment. And then saying to them, like, thank you for letting me be here. Thank you for letting me about letting me know about this. Thank you for allowing the law of attraction to to uh, intersect me here. All that. Yeah. And uh, Rick says my great uncle was one uh, medicine man. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also says that uh, whatever you want to call it, that consumes or lives or is out in the force, they know things. And when you talk about respect, mm -hmm. you know, the first thing that brings up in my mind, when I used to work off duty in law enforcement, I used to work at the airport and we, we used to, get uh, bricks of silver and gold bars off the airplanes, diamonds and large amount of cur uh, currency from around the world and uh, for Brinks and some of the armored companies and so forth. And um, way, way back in, I think, 60s or 70s or whatever, uh, they wanted to add on to the airport. And unfortunately, they couldn't because there was an annual Indy Indio burial ground sitting in the middle of the wow. area really? where they wanted to build. Okay. So, well, wow. man wanted to move it. Well, the people that the burial ground belonged to is like, man cannot move it. It is a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So they thought about it and they said, well, the heck with you. They put up a fence around it and built the airport around it. Really? Yes. Oh my God. And it's still <laughs> there today. Where is this? Uh, Louisville International Airport out of Kentucky. Are you serious? Yes. I've flown in there before. Yes. It's, oh, wow. It Why sure didn't you tell is. me that before? No. <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. <laughs> I never knew that. Yep. And Rick says, no, don't leave a hair. Now, why would, now, why, why not leave a hair? Now, okay, see. Well, thanks for saying that. I'll, I can add to that. Okay, so thanks for. Okay, so there are places that it's okay to do that, and then there are places that, that it is not. You do not want to do that. So good, good point. So yes, you have to discern. You know, is this somewhere that I maybe shouldn't? So you kind of like tune in and you pay attention to how it feels. And so yes, um, so I went to Chaco Canyon, which is in New Mexico, and that is an amazing, very sacred area. And I, you know, that whole experience that allowed me to line up with that place was just synchronicity after synchronicity after amazing 
And so, so I could tell you about that, but first I want to say that. So the weekend that I went there was the weekend that was one of the most main, like there's, I don't know, like two weekends in in the year that that's when you want to go. And I happened to be there on one of those weekends where it was this particular full moon. And then the way that all the, like literally like the the stars lined up, (laughs) it's just, I couldn't believe it. And so in my mind for a very long time before this, I was like, I want to go to ancient ruins. I don't call it that anymore though. I don't call them ruins, but I wanted to be able to go to a space, touch, the building, touch the structure and feel the energy of it and tune into the space to learn. Why did you build this here? What does this mean? What is this about? What was it for? You know, all that stuff. And so so here I was realizing, oh my God, I'm in this ranger led group and we're at our, she's led us to this first building and the, it, it reminds me the rocks, the way that these buildings are made, it's, it, it reminds me of modern tile, like in a bathroom, the way it's perfectly lined up and like the slate or something like that. It just, it's right, just right. such detail, such, such good precision. Um, what do you call it? Um, whatever. Work. We know what you're saying. Right. Work. Yeah. So I, it occurred to me, oh my God, here's my chance. So I asked, I asked first, is it okay if I touch it? So that's, that's the answer, you know, that I'm getting to here is for, I asked permission. Is it okay if I touch it? And she looked at me and this, this woman is a um, descendant of the ancient Chaconians. And so she looked at me like, wow, you are, you are someone, you know, you are someone that is, you know, paying attention, a good person gets it, whatever. And so she said, yes, thank you for asking. And then she said, just don't lean on it or, you know, sit on anything or whatever, but yes, you can touch it. I'm like, thank you. So I was the only one out of all the people who just put my hand on it. And I was just Okay, so then after the tour, I let her know of, of, of how I like to leave a hair. And she said, this is not the place to do that. Do not do that here. This is like a leave no trace place. And so when the people for the 300 years that they feel that this was in operation or whatever, when they were building these buildings and people were coming here for these reasons that they, they brought themselves there to the place and then they would leave their leave. There also was an area for, you know, distributing things like where the tribes would come together and share their, their, their different, you know, depending on the the part of the world where they were from their shells or their feathers or, you know, that sort of thing. But overall, this was a, is a leave no trace place. And that you, in, in her, the, the way she felt about it is you do not want to leave your hair here. And so I said, thank you for telling me. And that's another part too, that I very much appreciate. People do not have to tell anyone this stuff. And I'm very, very thankful and appreciative that she offered me that part of it, too. Yeah, absolutely. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you about Trisha now, okay? (laughs) And I'm going to throw this out there because the people that don't know her, she just does not go out into the field and just touches everything. She has abilities to feel vibes and vibrations and energies off objects that's why she wanted to touch and see what she got offered or received from that object well i wanted to feel like what humans that were living 
a thousand years ago, I wanted to feel them. I wanted to connect with them as, you know, I, that's one of my things is it's like time traveling a little bit for me, like getting able to connect with other humans from another time. So it was kind of like that too, you know? Right. Does right. That, I mean, that's yeah. That was, it wasn't like, it wasn't necessarily like, um, what is that called? There's a name for that when you hold an object and then it wasn't like psycho psychometry. It yeah. wasn't necessarily like psychometry. It was, getting to touch something that was from these other humans that they, that, that they made it. And then their, their, their uh, um, love and, you know, that they put into it and that, that kind of thing. So. Yeah. Right. Now Rick says Chaco Canyon has over 300,000 petroglyphs. 13 different beings can be seen there. Wow. Now, is that not crazy? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I saw some amazing petroglyphs there. That was also a mind boggling. Yes. And so I was only going to be there for um, a couple of days. So I definitely, it's one of those, I definitely want to go back and spend more time because I, I, um, I walked up this trail that there is no way that you would find it unless you know where it's at, that you can get up on top of this, this ridge, like not ridge, but like the top of this flat plateau. I don't know how to explain it, but there is a thousand year old tr like road trail that they walked on to come in that direction from my hundreds of miles or wherever they, you know, they, they came from that also lines up with ley lines that they think too. But so I wanted to go walk up there where these people walked back and forth. Forth. Right. And up right. there are these fire pits. So when you're up there and you're looking across the canyon, you can imagine that they had these fires going so that when you're coming in from that other side, you can see from for a long time where you're going to, to see those fires all, all lined up like a certain distance from each other, all the way down, like along this plateau thing that's up up a cliff. So I did that. And so, yeah, I mean, I've, I, I believe it. Um, I, 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 I've been many times fortunate to go to these locations where there's multiple paranormal experiences that you can have. And, and there's, I'm sure that there's lots going on there because, you know, the different reasons why they chose that location lining up with the moon and the stars and, you know, these, you know, and the sun and, and, you know, that they had been planning already to, to do this for a long time before they actually placed those buildings. So yeah, thanks for adding that. I, I didn't have, um, I didn't see any beings. Um, but when we, I was getting taken around to the different ranger led places, um, I was, to me, I, I, I was feeling the good stuff. I was feeling the good reasons, the good things. That's what I tune to. I don't want to tune to bad things. I don't want to tune to, uh, you know, hope, you know, watching a sacrifice or whatever. I mean, that's just not me. Right. 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 I understand. I like, I like the rainbows and unicorns side of things, you know? Um, so um, so there was at one time, there was a time frame before they started placing these um, sacred buildings that there was people that lived there like to, to do farming in this one area. And then there's so there's um, like kind of like a cemetery ish place where they don't like like meaning like there was people buried there at that time in history. And, but other than that, people didn't live there other than the, the sake, the, uh, the, um, what do you call it? The, um, the higher people, the, the priests, the priestesses or whatever, you know, the, that, that were, that did their part with the ceremonial stuff with the, the buildings, the kivas and stuff. Okay. So they, they, they did find some, some bodies, 
um, you know, in this particular area and uh, for, of, of those of those people. OK, so this experience that I had there is one of my most profound, profoundly positive, helpful things that I've had happen in my experiences with with this, the mystical side of things. So when I was driving in to this place, it is on an, a, on a reservation. And there's two, I think that there's two diff, only two different roads in and out. And the GPS <laughs> to the one that's like, you're kind of four wheeling. <laughs> it's like, no way. I'm, I was happy that I had rented. I, I, what I was doing was I was um, driving the rest of my stuff from California back to Georgia. And so on the way, I stopped in Chaco Canyon. So I was pulling a trailer with my stuff on it. And the back of the Toyota truck was loaded with my stuff. So I was able to, you know, do some gentle four wheeling. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized I was low on gas. I was like, no way. That sucks. <laughs> and I was already too far in to didn't. And, and I couldn't turn around with, with the road that I was on. It was just dirt roads, a dirt road. <clears throat> and I was out there. So I just had to keep moving forward. And so I get there that night and I park in the parking lot of the visitor center. And, um, and so to, to drive around in there, I mean, to get to one site to the other, it's more of a driving experience. So I also had to conserve on the amount of driving that I did while I was there. And then I had a moment like when it was getting close for me to go uh, to start heading, you know, I'll, I'll continue on my road trip. I, I was able to get a little bit of GPS to see where is the closest gas station because there was not any gas stations on the reservation on the, you know, in wow. the Canyon. Um, and so I, I, the amount of gas that was, that was registering that I had left in the tank, with the miles to drive to the gas station, there was no way I was going to make it. <laughs> wow. So, so I, I get to the stop sign where I'm pulling out of the, where to pull out from where the campsites are. And um, I was thinking, do I go right and go to the visitor center and just ask? Does someone, does someone have a tank of, uh, you know, like a, a small, uh, maybe a maintenance person? Does a maintenance person have a little bit of gas? Do I do that? Or do I go left and go out that entrance or exit that way, which was the more of the normal way people come in, which is flat, a flatter road, and hope for the best? So I, 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 I kind of slowed myself down and like was taking some just just breathing and just trying to figure out what to do. And then this all of a sudden this it was like this calm came over me. And then it was like I received this message that said. Go left. Just enjoy your trip out. Look around you. It's amazing what you're going to see as you're looking around, you're going to make it. And I, I, I trusted that message and I did, I, I went, I started on, I started out and I looked around, I saw like lava rocks and just like interesting landscape. And I would not let myself look down at the gauge <laughs> and I made it to the gas station no way yes okay so here's okay and then as i continued on with my road trip i had to drive through texas like the long way through texas straight across and during that trip i got another message that said put down your phone just go old school, you know, don't remember the days when you didn't use your phone to, you know, let you know where you're at, that you just 
stopped at gas stations and if you needed to for ask directions or whatever, you just are going straight for a very long time. And before that, before I got that message, um, my battery charger on my cell phone was not working. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> and so then I got the message, just put down the phone. Just enjoy your trip. Look around. And then I, I noticed that somehow my phone was charging. <laughs> So I was feeling these beings with me, along with me on my trip. And it was so fun and amazing. And I was like very tripping up. It was amazing. Wow. Wow. So they stayed for days, these beings. So it was a, it was a, a, I'm very thankful to, to them for, to, you know, for, for, um, I feel like it was kind of like an acknowledgement. Thank you for uh, respecting the space. Thank you. Thank you for doing your best to follow the rules. Um, another thing too, I want to just add, add since I'm talking about that while I was up walking on that, that thousand year old road up at the, up, up, up above, um, I had a time where I had to go pee. <laughs> I had to go to the bathroom. And so I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to accidentally, I, go, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go pee. And so I said, I just said, you know what, I just, I really just have to go to the bathroom. And so um I, I mean no disrespect. Um, and then I and so I, I I hid behind like a big boulder or whatever. And then this this message came over me that, you know what, we had to go pee too. You know, it was like that's human. And, you know, it's okay. <laughs> they, wow. <yeah>. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah. two things here, okay? First one, let's address Rick. So okay. I don't I, see I, him into the comments, so you have to tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should be able to. On the uh, left or right-hand side, there's a comment section. Uh, you, you should be able to click a button that says comments. Oh, comments. Let's see. Yeah. Now you can read Rick. Oh, oh my God. Sorry. Yeah. So go ahead and look at Rick's. Now, let me tell you something, Tricia. Now, me going old school, asking people for directions. I remember <laughs> when yeah. people would give mm -hmm. you wrong directions. And when you left, they would laugh. <laughs> Boy, oh they're going to find out the hard way that they're going in the wrong direction. <laughs> what a jerk. What jerks. Oh, yeah. No, I. I no, I just, there was one time that I, I just wanted a, a, a quick um, verification. So one of the times that I, that I just stopped for gas or whatever, and I went in, I experienced really nice people. Okay. <laughs> um, and I just said, so all I need to do, right, is just, I'm going towards Georgia and all I need to do is stay on this highway. Right. And they're like, yeah, you just, just go straight for a really long time. And so it was in the night. And for, you know, there was a, I, that, that part of the trip, I don't know. I just, on some of my uh, road trips across the States and listening to other people's experiences, driving back and forth across the States, hearing different people's like, I made it in this many days and whatever. And so I decided that part of the trip, I, so I, when I, after I got gas, I went, um, into, um, I forget what town it was, but I wanted to get breakfast. So I, I stopped for breakfast. And I decided when I got back on the road that I was just going to drive the whole day. So I drove the whole day. I watched the sun go down. I drove all night and watched the sun come up. So I watched the sun come up on the, you know, yeah, I don't know how to wow. explain it. Watching the sun come up and I just kept driving. And then I just pulled over to, at, a, at a, um, a rest stop. And like set my alarm for like an hour and I just like passed out <laughs> for like an hour, woke up and then kept going. But, um, but yeah, so, um, so that was, that was, uh, you know, special, you know, the, you know, I, I, I think, I, I think, I think of all that and very fondly, you know, very think, you know, like very thankful to have connected. And so I, you know, I, th they will, that there's a grace if you're trying, you know, 
you you know you have a you know person from out of the country they come in to the country they're learning our, our what's acceptable what's not acceptable or whatever in our cultures or you know you know somebody comes into your house and you have to you know you know oh can you take off your shoes and they're like oh sorry you know and then they take off their shoes or whatever they you know they don't they don't mean to but you you try to follow so that's what i've been doing is trying to follow you know okay so one of the the ladies that i um, I think her, what's her name? Moon Wolf. I can't remember right now, but she's more of a, she calls herself more of a um, contemporary medicine person. And she was giving some ways that you, if you want to go to a powwow or whatever, like this is what you do. If you want to watch, if you want to be a part, you know, just kind of observe. And this is what you don't do to be respectful and how to be with an elder and what to do, how to offer the food and, you know, whatever the, di the different things, you know? So, um, so I say all that because I want to tell this story that this experience that I had when I was in Montana. Um, wow. I'm, it's, it's, it's really unique. Um, and I have some pictures that I'm going to put on the, with, with this. Um, so when I got to this area and learned how the ancient people lived there, and I was very excited about that. And so while I was doing what I could to stay calm and enjoy myself being there while I was enjoying myself and then like what's going to be next in my life since I can't get across the border. Right. And in the meantime, taking my dog back and forth to that and, and enjoying all those experiences and all those trips. And then the rocks being thrown and the, how the, 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 the man yell and all that. Okay. So I was thinking to myself, I would love to meet with an elder in this area. And this was when everything's shut down. And this is the first time in the history of this town for a very long time where they don't have the, the Canadians there to help with the economy and this sort of thing. And so I kind of was trying to do my own research on like looking maybe up an organization or, or somehow find, found a, find a, a council or something in that area. And I, I tried that, that wasn't going anywhere. Um, and so I had two experiences with, with two different, I'm going to call them medicine people or elders. One was from the physical and one, one was from the non-physical. And so one of the times I was on my road trip from Eureka, Montana to Pullman, Washington, I stopped in Idaho. I think I was still in Idaho, possibly right at the beginning of Washington at a rest stop, at a rest stop. And I had my dog and my bird. We were just sitting on a bench, you know, just, just hanging out for a second. And there was an older lady that saw us and wanted, asked if she could take pictures of my bird. And it turns out that she has spent like 20 or 30 years in communication with the Native Americans from around the United States. And she has a book about the Garfield Bay area of, of the, of that, this time when the, you know, way back when the ancient people lived there and what, whatever she's, she's a very, very knowledgeable, knowledgeable person and a helpful person in this area of wanting to talk to an elder, <laughs> which I hadn't even real like thought about it at that moment. Right. About, you know, asking her. So, okay. So, when I realized I was not going to be able to go over to Canada and, and, and live and work, I knew that I was, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm willing to try living in this little tiny town. That's an hour from the next big town. So I started working at this company that um, is called Glacier Peak Holistics and this is the um, the manufacturer, the, the, like the warehouse where they actually make like grind up the herbs 
and the tinks, the tinctures. I have a hard time with that word. And the the different things for horses, animal, um, horses, cats, and dogs, like holistic um, healing. These different different remedies. It's amazing, and I was so happy to be able to be a part of that. So I was really happy to have to start working and to work in that what that's about. So the so um, I started on a Monday. I think I think I started on a Monday. And the day before that, I went to meet with a dad who needed a nanny for his when for when he had his kids. And while I was there, he starts telling me some experiences that they were having on the land and how their dog all of a sudden turned on one of the kids and how his wife started to act not well and then like crashed herself into you know whatever just these weird things were going on and i was like well that doesn't sound very positive that seems pretty negative like not good energy happening and then while i was talking to him at one point like i swear his eyes looked not right they like they look black and so let's wrap this up yeah so that night, I mean, I, I sleep really good. I have good dreams. There's only been a couple times in my entire life where that felt like there was a weird vibe in my dream. And that was, it happened that night. Like I did not sleep well. There was a creepy vibe in my dream. So, and then around this time before that, I was like, I want to talk to an elder. Maybe I can like, learn some stuff while I'm here and like have some teachings and, and maybe I could do a sweat lodge. And that would, you know, this, this is the kind of things I was thinking about. Oh, hello dogs. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What are their names? Tiny and Emmett. Oh yeah. Hello dogs. Okay. Um, so during that first day, I'm in a room, one of the rooms with this, just another girl, me and her, she's over there doing her thing, maybe placing labels on, on jars. And maybe I'm over here putting stickers on bags or, you know, whatever. And we're just peacefully doing our thing. And all of a sudden I, I, I I feel something on my back and I I just, I kind of reach back behind my shoulder and it, it feels like kind of like if you have a tight bra strap or something or a tight strap. So it's, it feels like you need to like move it away and like feel it back there. That's what I was thinking it was like, maybe my strap is too tight because I'm feeling like raised. I didn't know what it was. I'm like feeling something there. It's like, what is that? And then I forgot about it. Went back. And then the day my, the work day ended at like five or whatever. And, or maybe four. And then I went back to where I was staying at that camper trailer at the RV park. And I was hanging out inside the camper. And all of a sudden that area started like tingling. So I had at that time, it was like, I was getting ready for bed. So I had my, I had a nightgown on. So which, which had like skinny straps. So I'm like, I'm going to try to take a picture of my own back. (laughs) I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I was able to do it and I could not believe what I saw. So the first, I got two pictures. One is more of a closer up than the other one. Actually a total of three pictures that I, I will put on, 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 the, when I, on the post. The, the first two are from that night that I took of myself. And it looks like the first, when I was first looking at it before I like zoomed in, it looked like a Z. And oh, then, wow. Yeah. And I was like, what? No way. And so then I, I took another, I wanted to get like more of a, like back, let's kind of hold the camera back a little bit more. So I, I got that angle. And with both of those two angles, you can see like, it's like a symbol. And I have Reiki one, Reiki two. So, you know, you learn symbols with Reiki and then you have to memorize them 
when you're in your in your certificate, you know, in the in this initiation process. And that's what came to me. I'm like, this looks like a symbol. And then when I when I pulled in, you could see like these other other parts, not just an not just a Z. There was these other uh, lines, like curved, and you know that kind of thing. So um, everything good? Yeah, everything's perfect. Okay. So then the next day, I had a coworker take a picture of my back. And so you can see it still. And like, it's, it was like, um, okay, so, so I asked around, is there anyone out there that's really good with understanding symbols? Because I felt like that it was a shamanic symbol. I felt like I received a symbol. That's what it felt like to me. So this couple who were both medicine people, I sent them the pictures and they said, yes. And then they explained to me that a shaman will use a symbol with their work, but you can also combine symbols to make a, a new meaning. Um, or you can, you know, you can make up your own, you know, there's, there's these different things that you can do. And so what they saw in this was two different symbols put together. And what they feel it meant was purification slash healing. And then the other one giving slash healing. Wow. For me, for two reasons, for protection and as a, like I earned, like I, like, you know, I, I saw an image in my mind from when I was in Girl Scouts and Brownies, you wear like a sash, right? The circle, um, uh, that you, that you like the merit badge that you sew on your sash cause you earned it. <laughs> A picture was just taken. I just heard that. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> okay. Um, so I feel like I earned, I earned this. Like it was like given to me for whatever reasons. <laughs> That's I wild. That is like extremely wild. I mean, because I've actually seen the photographs and they look like they were almost etched into you and scratched. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, yeah. it's hard to describe. Yeah. 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 That's what I was thinking too. Like, like almost like there was an instrument or something that was taken to do it. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So the, that girl, the woman that was with me that day, she ended up making up stuff about me to the boss. Oh, so I think that it was, partially to protect me because of what was to come because of, you know, not only the protecting me from whatever energies that were at that, that, that land with the, with the husband and then this build, not the building, but the people there. And then to get me through all that. Okay. So, but also, you know, in my studies, you know, you know, I'm in my applying teachings of being a good person and then, um, you know, wanting to have my vibration be at a very high level, you know, there's things that you do for yourself to, to help that. And one of the things is purification or, or detoxing or cleansing or that kind of thing. And I had another time in my life where I was told by the non-physical, put your dog in this particular water along this area called the healing passage, run your, the water down her back, and then put your hands in the water. And then pay, like, basically now tell others, you know, help others pay it forward kind of thing. So that's been kind of one of my, one of my themes is 
I receive help. I pay it forward. I meaning I do what I can do, which, you know, the things I know how to do to pay it forward to, to others. So right. there's just, there was just a lot of, of that, a lot of different, different things that, that, that associated, you know, with, with that. And so, so now I know it was, it was kind of like, um, energetically given to me. So it's, it's a part of who I am now. Does like almost like a tattoo. It yeah. Like, it was tattoo. really amazing when I looked at them because I was like, you know, it wasn't like, a child with a pencil with scribbly lines they were perfectly lines mm -hmm. that were look like intentionally drawn yeah in a certain pattern yes that's what caught my attention yeah so i feel that a shaman medicine person elder someone you know when when when, when people are, when the native people are just, and, and, and I want to say to whoever, you know, any, any um, first nations or indigenous people that are listening, I, I I'm doing my best to express this in the most accurate um, way as I can. Okay. So know that, <laughs> um, that, um, that when they're describing um, a person who, you know, might be the best person for that other person who might need help, they'll say, go to that person. They don't say like, go to that shaman or whatever, whatever, you know, they'll just say, go to that person who lives at the end of that street or whatever, that, that they'll be able to help you with this, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, well, I tell a lot of people that, that are into Bigfoot, Sasquatch, foot, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call him mm -hmm. or her, the tree people, that's what I call them, you know, or the tree people is that if you really want to learn about them and the history find an indian group an indian tribe indigenous people mm -hmm. and pay them a visit and let them know they what are you are doing and interested in mm -hmm. and they will spend time with you yeah that would be amazing i, I definitely that's that's what I've, I've been wanting to do is connect more with with people that would love to to share more with me about about stuff for sure. Um, yeah. And also too, you can ask them directly, you know, that's what, you know, you know, letting the, the tree people know that you would like to be friends and know them. And I've, I've done that. And I've said to them, I've said out loud to the space and then I said out loud to the space. And then I also was like talking to and through the trees down through the roots, the root systems around the world, like, like saying the message, the same, you know, like, thank you for being with me in my life. I really appreciate you being with me. I cried knowing that, that they were around me and made my experience gentle and fun. And, you know, and then realizing that that these different little things that they've been doing okay so after i said i want to know you i want to be friends thank you i want to learn from you I'll, i want to help in any way very soon after that is when i started hearing the owls and the vocals and then you know it so it's been progressing and so you know that they were like okay yeah. And so they've been doing different things to let me know that they're there and to know that they're supporting me and giving me love and, you know, all that. And I, 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 I really appreciate it, you know? So, um, I ended up, so going back to the wanting to talk to an elder, I ended up calling that, that, that woman, the author and telling her what, what I was wanting, that I was wanting to talk with a, a an elder and maybe do a sweat lodge or, you know, do some, have some learnings while I'm here. So she connected me to a man that lives in a town, um, Hot Springs, Montana. So I drove down there, met with him and he ended up allowing me to watch a video of a whole, um, helpful psychological 
approach to working through the ancestral um, trauma and right. and helping the indigenous people, the the First Nations people, um, the descendants to find peace to 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 do some uh, this it's like a program right that you can be taken through and i don't remember the name of it sorry i i i, I he, he he offered me to watch watch it and i and and you know i was very appreciative of of it um i was blown away that he was willing to show me this that this is available to people out there so he was in his journey of wanting to to lead these groups. So I I I I I I was blown away to get to have both both of these experiences with a non-physical that came and did that while I was at, you know working at that and then getting to actually go and, and meet with with an elder and he was a nice man. And as I'm talking about this, I'm remembering this other experience that I had. I, I was told I lived for a little bit when I first got into Eureka, into town, Eureka, Montana. I did live at a house very close to the Canadian border that had behind the house. Um, I don't know if it's called forest service land, public land that anyone can just walk straight back up there for acre, miles and acres. So I did that two times and it was like two of the best days of my life. It was amazing up there, the view from up there. And while I was up there, uh, okay, by the way, I love walking up to trees and putting my hand on a tree and saying and, and, and acknowledging the tree. That's another thing I learned from this, this man, this medicine man that, told me about leaving your hair as an offering. Um, he said that, um, that back in the, the days when the ancient people were there before any of the settlers came, when they were just doing their living their lives, the trees were acknowledged. They were acknowledged. And so trees really appreciate being acknowledged for what they do. And you can talk to them and they'll, they'll, you can exchange energy and they can, you know, you can give and receive energy to the tree and that kind of thing. So I'm up there walking and I'm thinking, wow, this is possible that, that, that I am seeing things that no one has seen. And I, you know, it was the time of the year where it was spring and early summer and these wild flowers that were out there and this, the sweet grass that was growing all over that area. That's a sacred plant. Yes, it is. I couldn't believe it. And it was at the same time I was listening to the audio, it, this woman's audio book teaching about sweet grass. It's like, this is interesting timing. So I see a tree and I decide I'm going to go walk over to that tree. And then I was like, I want to hug this tree. And like, right when I'm walking up, I saw a flash in my mind's eye of a man. Like I was hugging a man instead of the tree. I don't know how else to explain it other than that. That's very interesting. Yeah. Like this, he looked modern, like a modern indigenous person but i don't think it was and so in my saying as i travel around the united states this wanting to connect with with humans from another time i think in that moment i was getting to and so it felt like even though i was hugging a tree i was receiving a hug from this man, this really kind, gentle man that was, he was like, I'm going to say he's probably about in his, I'm going to say in his sixties and um, like a, like a 
like almost an uncle figure or a, or a young, a, a young, um, or a fatherly figure or a young grandpa. I don't know. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, so, the, so that, that's, that's, that's kind of the stuff I wanted to talk about. I mean, I could really spend days and hours talking about all, all these different experiences, but I thought let's now kind of switch gears and talk about our, how we, our enjoyment of this, this wanting people to understand that, that, that there are these positive paranormal experiences that can be had out there. Okay. I know that me and you have talked about that like offline. So yes. tell, say more about that so that we can let people know what we're talking about so that, you know, let's, let's talk about that. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, it is there's two sides to a coin right if you believe in one side you have to believe in the opposite side but you know you got to remain focused and like she said earlier you have to propel fear from the body and that is something that's stated a lot in the biblical references across the new and old testament and i'll leave it at that but you know ghost Sasquatch, Bigfoot, tree, tree man, foot, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, or he or she. Yeah. Uh, they know your intentions before you actually enter the woods. They know if you're good. They know if you're bad. Now we're sounding like Santa Claus, but it's actually, you know, <laughs> bigger than that. It's so funny. Yeah. I mean, and actually it is. And, yes. you know, it it is the they truth. Know they know us. They know and, our Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people realize that. And and they tell you before you go into the woods, you know, don't go out to seek them. They will come to seek you. Yeah. You know, and that's what a lot of people make their mistakes. They go out there and bark and make what you call man sounds and knocks on trees. And, you know, and unfortunately, they put all these trail cams up and, they get blurry pictures and, and everybody's like, well, oh gosh, here comes another blob squad, you know, and people don't understand is that electronics, <laughs> yes, you know, and, and Sasquatch or whatever you want to call him, it or her does not work together. They drain batteries. They have interference somehow. And then when people want to complain about taking pictures off cell phones, it's like, now look, you are a human being you never seen one in your entire life and you just walked up on one, right? And you try to pull out your cell phone without shaking and try to take a picture of it. And remember on cell phones, there is a slight delay in taking the photograph. So if you push that button and move, guess what? It's going to be blurry. So when I mean, you got to plant your feet firmly, well, you know what? I don't think it would. I think I'd be running. So, you know, we, I don't know their intentions. You know, some people say they're good. You know, other people say they have horrible experiences. But what causes their horrible experiences is my question. What are you doing, you know, to the land, which they call theirs? Are you clearing out 30, 40 acres? Are you upsetting them? You know, are you, are you destructing their land? which we are, we're encroaching on everything, building Walmarts, buildings, houses, subdivisions, and so forth. But then you also had the spirituality of things. And this is where Trisha comes in. And this is where I tell people, you also have the good side. But you have to think positive about that to make things happen. You know, if you go in with negativity, you leave with negativity. If you go in spirituality with positivity or being positive, you leave with positive energy. And that's what people are always trying to tell people. And that's what we need to listen to is that message. Now, ladies and gentlemen, coast to coast and around the world, everybody's got their own views and opinions. I understand and I totally agree. But one thing that we must realize is that everybody has their own opinions. Not only that, their encounters and experiences as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what really matters. 
So I just, I, I, I like to offer people how to have the positive experiences. You know, there's, there's things that you can do so that, that you do have positive experiences and, and, uh, things that, you know, you don't want to do. <laughs> so, um, when you, when you bring yourself somewhere, you're bringing your own energy there. So that is correct. You know, um, when you, you, the way, the way, what you want to do, whether it's having a paranormal experience, meaning like, you know, you want to go to somewhere that's known to be haunted, known for things to move around and, 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 and have activity, or whether you want to experience um, going into the woods and, and having a sighting or, or seeing their structures and that kind of thing, the way that you can protect yourself is by, and when I say that, what I mean is when I say protect yourself, I just mean like have giving yourself more of a, an opportunity to have like not only a good experience, but the mystical experiences, the, the, the magical, the things that, that make you feel euphoric um, that you're getting to watch, uh, um, you know, um, something fall out of, out of, out of midair and land in front of you or, or, um, you know, they're, they're, they're initiating contact with you and, you know, you know, whatever. So you want to feel good. I mean, it seems so basic, you know, I mean, you want to be happy, you know, you want to, um, be having peaceful thoughts. Well, you do because demons and, and demonic well, spirits do not want you to be happy, right? They don't. They don't want joy. They don't want joyfulness in, around them. They want the sad, the negative thing. They want the fear into you. That's what they feed on. So they're, they're when, when you're out there ghost hunting and stuff or ghost investigating, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it cracks me up. And, it, and it's like, well, nothing's happening. So let's make them, hey, pay, you know, and then they, they conjure stuff up. But they don't know what they're doing. And then they tell the homeowners, well, you got demons in the house. No, you pr probably got a pissed off spirit. You know, they don't want to leave the house because of whatever reason. And you have to help them find the way out and give them the tools necessary to get them out. Does that make sense? So, well, yeah. I mean, so okay. So that's a realm of 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 vibration. That is a realm of spirit. Okay, that's like the lower energies. So imagine, um, you know, I, I, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, I have a whiteboard. I'm gonna draw these. Yeah, it's absolutely. Called, it's called a the emotional guidance scale, right? So it starts at the top imagine like a lined piece of paper like a college lined paper so at the very top of the page number one the emotions that are more the most corresponding to pure positive energy god source energy is joy love appreciation empowerment knowledge and then passion is number two. Number three is positive expectation and positive belief. And I think four is happiness. And I think five is, I can't remember, but there's, um, and then it goes down to like, um, hope. And then below that is contentment. And then below that is like disappointment and then, you know, worry, um, anger, revenge, you know, like the lowest, the very lowest is fear, despair, depression. Well, see, and that's the problem with that list that you just given me mm -hmm. is what I think a lot of people's mistakes is they got the list in the wrong order when they go somewhere 
well, they just don't, they don't, they don't, they don't know this. I've spent like literally years of my life studying this stuff because it's been like the interest of really wanting to understand the metaphysics behind an experience. You know, there's, there's these, these, these master teachers who offer these teachings if you want to know. And so, you know, I'm like, I want to know how to have the most positive experiences in my life, period. I want to be around the nicest people. I want to, you know, have good things happen in my life, but also like, wow, to get to, you know, as I was listening to this, to the shaman, to this, to, to this man who was like willing to teach me, he's like everything. And, and, and you know, then I, you know, I learned this in, in other ways. I went to spiritual studies school to develop my mediumship and my energy work and getting my master's in metaphysics and all that. So, I mean, years of studying this stuff, um, everything has a conscience, everything. So a rock, the wall, you know, just, just, you can connect, you can connect with everything. And so, and then there's vibration. Everything is energy. Everything is energy. Everything is energy. A thought is energy. An emotion is energy. So, and then the, the corresponding levels of spirit with a capital S. So at the very, very top, corresponding is purest, the purest positive energy. So the realms of spirit that are in the purest positive -ist energy is God's source, the creator connecting with God, connecting with source energy. You have ascended masters that you can connect with and have, you know, amazing experiences with where they're, they're helping humanity. You have, archangels who have their part here in, in, in our world, helping us. You have angels, you have spirit guides, and you have the helping spirits. And you also have your loved ones and your friends and family members that have crossed over into the light. So these, this realm, this realm of energy especially like the going up from the spirit guides, the helping spirits and the, the Sasquatch people, they're in there. Um, the, there's the fairy realm and all those. There's a, there's a range of vibration, a range of frequency. The Sasquatch people are healers. They, they've, there's many stories of them being like shamans, like helping you. So if you want to experience that realm, you want to keep your vibration high. And so there's different things that you do to do that. You want to keep your thoughts good, positive, and you want to feel good. So emotion and feeling together is very powerful. So the let's say the the just the, the typical um house that's haunted or like building or whatever where chairs are moving and whatever um those are more probably the earth bounds the earth bounds so the earth bounds earth bound spirits are at a lower vibration than the your loved ones and the, 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 the beings have that when they have, when they, when they separate from their body, when, when their body dies and they go into the light that they, they have now ascended, they have now ascended. And now that they, they're, that are, they're at a, a, a higher level of vibration, the earth bounds are, have not gone into the light yet, but they could be. Just someone that for whatever reason, there's different reasons. Sometimes they don't know. They don't know that they died. That is absolutely correct. Or they, it was, it was that because that they feel so connected still to their family for, you know, their own, you know, these, these, the lower emotions. And so, you know, that they're kind of, you know, as time goes on, 
they get more confused because, you know, they're kind of outside of time and space. And so they don't really, they're just still caught up in the, those emotions that were going on when they, when they died. And then, you know, you know, I don't have all the answers. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying like what I want to help with what I do know. Um, okay. So now let's, let's, let's say that with just in the earthbound spirit realm, that's anybody. Okay. That's people. That's your neighbor. That's, um, someone in, in, you know, that, that did some bad things to people and are now in a box with bars. So you can come upon any of those people just like they're free to roam. They're free to roam, <laughs> you know, like, you know, so you, it, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're wanting to go to a building because you're interested in seeing a prison, like just the, the history of the prison or like, or like the opportunity to go to a, a, a house that's historical, you kind of want to be in a mindset of, of that. I want to be tuning into something that's a higher um, vibration. So it'd be like, I'm very curious to see the architecture of this building or whatever. Like you are tuning yourself to something higher range. So if you do that, then you're going to be able to keep yourself safe because physics wise, metaphysics wise, the lower energies, they may be around you, but they can't affect you. So the earthbound spirits that we want to help have them move on. We want to keep our vibration high. We want to keep our thoughts high. We want to keep our emotions high. And we want to learn how to go from being empathic, which is at a level, to compassion, which is at a higher level of vibration because you're, you're, you care, you care, but you're not going to get caught in the, the tidal wave or the, the, the whirlpool or the, the, the drama. You're not going to get caught in the lower emotions. You do not want to lower your vibration to connect in that way. Cause I've, I've asked a lot of people that are interested in the paranormal side of things. Like they like to go investigate and they have all their equipment. And I ask what I say to people is, or ask them, what is your intention for doing this? Have a good intention for doing this. Okay. What is your intention? A lot of them say, I want to help. Okay. How are you helping? Is, is, do you think being is saying, do you have a message for a loved one that I can pass along? Like, no, well, that's not <laughs> what they do. Help them move on, like help them like learn how to transition, help them to transition on. Okay. Do let's, let's all learn that. Okay. So well, some most of them, them want to go that. in there and they want to Not make contact with the dead, mm -hmm. get evidence. The yes. evidence is going to shock the world. That's right. so incredible, whether it's EVP, yeah. right. recorded, thermal, what, whatever type of electronic device that you shall use. But yeah. then, like you said, you do have the other people that are called upon because they actually do have concerns or uh, well, health elements at home that actually do need help and cannot figure out what's going on. What I'm saying is their way of helping, they think that their way of helping the spirit is that the spirit is going to pass along some message to the loved one. Not all the time. And I'm saying to those people, this is a human being that needs help to move on into their next journey. 
And sometimes they don't want to move on because they are fear for what they are going to be judged by. Exactly. So, and you, they don't want to go in the light. And sometimes you have to force them out of the house or the building so or off the land. Okay. So I'm going to say that in my, in some of my gathering over the years. Okay. I've been interested in this since I was in elementary school. Okay. I had my first experience that was very unusual when I was like two and I started seeing spirits when I was seven. And so since I was, I don't know, I think high school, I was like, I want to be a parapsychologist. <laughs> <what> I was <laughs> like, <"Yeah." laughs> so I started studying psychology, uh, philosophy, wanting to find whatever I could about, you know, the afterlife and, you know, you know, on and on in my inner senses development, et cetera. Um, so interpersonal skills, um, building rapport, you know, if you really listen to some of the, you know, the demonologist by Ed Lorraine Warren and ghost tracks are two very good books to learn about the different levels of spirit and what you have to look forward to. If you want to go down into the lower levels and connect with the lower levels, it's not good. <laughs> So, and unfortunately, there are people out there, Tricia, that wants to lower themselves to well, experience they, and I film. Don't understand? I don't. They're this just is why I'm individual. You. I mean, I I interview people that are pagan, that they have an altar where they cut themselves and shed their blood on their altar and pray to. Whoever okay. they pray to, and it's just like, well, why? I don't want to. Really, I don't really want to spend time on that. But like, I'm talking to the people that they want to have an experience, a positive but, one. And if you know you, you can test. You can have it. Like, let's say, let's do an experiment. Okay, I want to have an experiment. I want to have an experience. I'm telling you that you can have like euphoric experiences where you feel like you're vibrating, you feel like you're floating and you're, and you're connecting to the angels that are present, the archangels that are present, the, the, the people that have lived there, um, who you, you know, you want to learn from the house. You want to learn from the, the land, let someone from there teach you what really happened. So there's these, so I'm just saying like, there's different things that you can do that you want to, you know, you want to, you know, eat healthy and cleanse the, whatever vibrations that are in you that might be lower, let those release out of you do your own inner work in <clears throat> your own inner work so that you're, um, you're making sure to, you know, be focusing in the right direction. Okay. So I just, I, I, just, I hope that makes sense, but yeah, I, it, it actually does make good sense. I wanted to just say that, like, if let's say if you have um, something going on in your house that you think that's um, maybe you're, it, it feels not good, um, but you're not sure um, you, you want to be subtle. Okay. This is something I want people to understand. Okay. Like if they're okay. So sometimes you want to be super subtle while you're doing your energy work. You don't want to announce it. Imagine that there is a bully that you're dealing with at work. You're not going to say to everybody, like, I'm going to get this guy fired because he's a dick. What would that do? That's going to super set him off, right? Oh, He's not gonna only that, it's going to make you look like a bad guy. He's going to retaliate maybe on you. It's like, oh, really? Game on, right? So, so sometimes you don't want to announce. You want to use code words sometimes when you're talking to someone else about it. Like you call it like the tick or the flea or... You know, there's a book that I read on psychic self-defense where he says that he calls them negs, capital N-E-G period, negs. 
So you you don't and you know so that you you kind of be on the sly. Okay. So also you use color that is higher vibrational colors around you, wear high vibrational colors around you or on you, have them at the house. Um, essential oils have like a diffuser going with, with the high vibrational scents. I like combining spearmint and frankincense. That's a really good combo. It smells really good, but you know, you know, how, um, aromatherapy, you know, what, whatever right. feels good to you is good, but like these different scents that are high vibration. So when you have very, very high, powerfully positive, these different things, it, then the, the lower energies cannot be there in physics. You can say these certain sayings or affirmations. And this is, this is what I'm going to tell you guys. It's I'm loved and I am worthy. I am safe and I am free. I am powerfully protected. I am master of my body and I am ruler of my mind. And I've been helping people on Facebook land for a lot of years now. They'll message me and, and tell me what's going on. And then the people who want to listen to me, who do these things that I say, you know, make sure in yourselves that you're, you know, are you fighting or whatever? Well, stop fighting, get along, do what you got to do, do what you got to do to raise your vibration. And so that you're in a higher vibration, keep it that way. You know, I, I see it like spinning a top, you know, those little kid toys, you spin right. the top. You have to keep it spinning. You yourself have to keep it spinning the way that some teachers that I follow, Abraham Hicks, they are amazing teachers who teach about this in a very practical way, in a very uplifting and um, encouraging way that it's not like, like a college degree. You have to keep it up. You have to keep, you have to be consistent and it, there's a momentum. So it's, it's a, there's a momentum and and pattern of thought so if you're kind of in the low let's say you've been having dealing with some stuff you start right here right now because that's that's all that we're, there is and from this moment on you stop saying things that are going to keep creating things in your life that you don't want and you move forward from right here, right now, and do these things and allow that momentum to build. It's kind of like cognitive therapy. You, if you're in a feeling of sadness or, or anger or whatever, you have to be saying to yourself the best, the next best positive thing that you can, because you can't go from feeling anger to yay life is amazing <laughs> like that that you know but the easiest emotion to get there though is appreciation absolutely you know we we as people ha sometimes have a hard time with the word love like just to you know like so feeling appreciation inside of yourself will build that energy and then the next thing you know you're having mystical experiences so there you go i rambled sorry <laughs> no and i think you're absolutely right i, I think you're on the right path i think oh. that people actually need Wait. to listen uh let me tell you yeah i mean i really do i, I think you're making a big impact impact on a lot of people that's awesome but you know it's it's the thing though is is that people need to adhere and think about what they're doing that's the problem because they don't and they take things that they don't know what they're dealing with they don't know how to deal with things they're conjuring things up they're not well, being positive well that's why i'm saying what i'm saying what what i just said right now is like right. we're, we're wanting to, to have people understand that if you want to have an experience practice having a good experience. If you want to test, 
the paranormal realm, might as well test it with a positive experience. Amen. Right? I totally agree. Now, how, do, uh, how does everybody get a hold of you again? You can go to uh, Facebook, Trisha Brown Free Spirit. That's where you find me on Facebook. There's a silhouette of a Sasquatch for my profile. You can um, um, join my Facebook group, Paranormal Spiritual and Mystical Experiences. You can find my uh, YouTube channel, um, Exploring the Paranormal with Trisha Brown. Or you can email me at excellenttrisha at email.com. There you go. You can message me. If you have a question or have a comment or you know, need some help with something. I will. I will do what I can. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from Tricia. <laughs> Please reach out to her. She's uh, one of a kind, and I love having her on the show. She's always full of wisdom, and that's really hard to find. I'm telling you from coast to coast and around the world ladies and gentlemen it's that time of the night i have another live show at 9 p.m eastern time uh this one's gonna be a little bit different we never tried this one before but uh i got a co-host uh really different no script we're just gonna let it fly on the road so that's fun yeah it, it's gonna be interesting but you know what i'm sorry we have to go but we'll see you next time good night everybody okay. Bye. Bye.